Corral Draw Tips and Tricks. Today's session is how to eliminate those pesky white bounding boxes with clip art. Brought to you by Condi Systems. Voila! You've finally found that perfect piece of clip art. And when you import it into Corel and go to use it over a colored background, there's that lousy white bounding box. How on earth can you get rid of that thing so you can use that piece of clip art? Well, in previous versions of Corel, back prior to the X series, that was a 15-step process. But you know what? We can do it now in just a few steps. Here's how it works. First, we go to Window. Then we go to Dockers. Then we go to Bitmap Color Mask. When we do, you'll see this Docker opens up with about 10 black bars. What we're going to do is select the first one, use our eyedropper, go in, click on the white background, and then apply. Now look. No bounding box. Of course, it works better if you put it on something other than black because the clip art itself is black. Let's do it again. Let's take another logo. Let's take this Caterpillar logo. And if we move it up in front of a solid color, you can see that, sure enough, there's that white bounding box. And we're going to go up to our eyedropper, click on the white again. Now, the reason we didn't use the previous white is because white is not always white. Sometimes when you import these, they have just a tinge of yellow or something else mixed in with it. And so just to make sure that we get the perfect white, we're going to re-click on that eyedropper each time. Now let's go up to Apply, and look what happened. We zoom in. It's almost perfect, but not quite. But no problem, because now we're going to go over and look at the slider that is underneath those black bars and we'll move it to center and you can see that all the white background is now gone. That makes a perfect logo for sublimation on just about anything. Now let's talk about the limitations of this capability. Let's take a piece of clip art that's fairly simple like this one and we'll put it up in front of the black and you can see it has a white bounding box so we'll get our eyedropper we'll go over and click on that and apply and if we zoom in you can see it's not the greatest but not bad I guess but if we take our slider and put it over in the middle that's eh, a little too far you can see it improves as we move the slider, as we experiment with the slider. The problem with this piece of clip art, as with many others, we'll do another one up here. This one I've already done for you. You can see it's there, but not the greatest. Even if we play with the slider, it's not going to get fantastic. The reason it's not going to be fantastic is because the resolution is so very, very low. We can do just about anything we want to with this. Let's take this piece, for instance, which is actually a photograph. And we're going to use our eyedropper. We're going to, whoops use our eyedropper and we're going to get that gray and apply and you can see it just disappeared well did it really let's move our slider over and maybe not there is the image it's not great 
it's not even good. But it did take care of the background for us. Now, had that been a high-resolution image, just imagine what it would be looking like. So we can work with just about anything, including photographs, to do this. The problem is we need good resolution. And we'll look at some images in a minute that do have good resolution, and we'll play with those. But before we do that, I want to show you something else. This piece of clip art, for instance, has three or four basic colors in it. One of the nice little tricks we can do with this bitmap color mask is we can take our eyedropper, we can go in and select one color, like the yellow, and remove it. it becomes transparent. Now is that cool or what? We'll put that back. And we can do the same thing with any color. But here's something even cooler. Let's look at this eagle on a black background. That looks really good, but let's say, for instance, that we want to put it on a bigger black background. And so we drag it over, and black is black, and so it shouldn't be a problem, but it is. Because the two blacks are not the same, and you will never be able to match them. But if we use our color mask tool, get our eyedropper, select that black, and apply, look what happens. Now if we take it and put it in front of white, it doesn't look very good because it removed all the black in the image. But positioned on a larger piece of black, it allows us to use it and there is no bounding box of another color. Now let's move over to some higher resolution images. We're going to learn two ways to take backgrounds out with this particular part of the session. And we'll start with Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas is a piece of high resolution clip art. And we're going to take our eyedropper. We're going to click on black, tell it apply. And now we can, oops, we can place that on anything, any color whatever we want to do. Nice, clean clip art. And that's because it was a higher resolution than what we've been working with before. Here's an interesting little trick. This tree is actually pretty low resolution. We're going to click on the white background and apply. And look what we can do. Let's zoom in so we can see it. We can make the tree look pretty good as long as we don't zoom in on it too much. Let's zoom back out and you can see as we get out it doesn't look too bad and we can play with our little slider and we can do even better with it. Let's take another piece of clip art. Well this isn't clip art, this is actually a photograph and you can see it's a city skyline at probably at dusk and Obviously, there's a lot of pollutant in the air. You can barely see the buildings. Let's take our eyedropper and let's click on the gold and apply. Well, that didn't do so good, but let's move our, eye, our little slider and we can play with that and get a special effect whoops, of that building. And you can see it's just a matter of experimenting. There we go. And now we don't have a perfect piece of clip art, but if we spend a few minutes with the erase tool or even with um, uh, a cutting tool, a knife tool, we can create something that looks a little bit like this and use it as something of a avant-garde background. 
Here's a photograph. We can do a special effect with this. Let's go up and get the gray and apply. And we'll play with our slider a little bit. And if we play with it just right. So by doing a little bit of cleanup and putting it in front of a black background, we come up with something that resembles a impressionistic oil painting. Now let's take this photograph, which is kind of cool. It's got a black background, but let's select the black and look what we've got. And let's create a, again, we could use a larger black background if you wanted to, to keep the bounding box from showing. We'll make that black, put it in the background, and we can do it a new black background, but we can also put it on something else. I don't know why you'd want it on red, but there it is on red, crimson, green, whoops. green, and so on. So even though it's a photograph, you can do some interesting things with it. Okay, let's move up and look at two other pieces. Here's one that if we zoom in on it, it's just a scribble. And it would make a nice, interesting background in some applications. But no matter what you're going to do with this, it's really not going to do very well. So I'm going to introduce you to another way of getting rid of that background. When you've got something like this, we can use what is called Trace Bitmap. We're going to go to Outline Trace, and we're going to go to Line Art. And we'll tell it OK. And now look what we have. A nice clean piece of clip art and there is no bounding box. Let's do the same thing with this flourish. And if we take the background out of it, we have to select it first, if we take the background out of it, we get a pretty nice flourish. But you'll notice that there still is some pixelization going on there because it is a fairly low resolution image. But now let's take that and let's go to Trace Bitmap, Outline Trace, Line Art, give it a second to work, click OK, now we have nice, clean images and no bounding box. The other nice thing about this particular method is that not only do we have a high-resolution, clean piece of clip art, but you can make this piece of clip art as big or as small as you want to, and, and it will retain the same quality. So... There's two ways of getting rid of the bounding box, one using a bitmap color mask and the other using bitmap trace. Hope you found this helpful.